some good stuff. Gentlemen, do I have a special episode for you today? Not not just gentlemen, ladies too. You know, I have over 380 subscribers these days, and it would be completely silly of me to just assume that all of those are male viewers, you know, other than my mom. If if you're a female and you're watching this channel, just hit that like button and show all the dudes just how many chicks are enjoying this car content and this awesome channel please please hit the the like button any anybody just hit the, hit that like button anyways mr bo rivers one of the main honchos over at Harris Hill raceway is entering into a lemons race with an old studebaker uh, i'm not quite sure what you call this thing or what the model is it's an it's kind of like a car crashed into an airplane sort of design you know, the typical stuff you'd see in the early 1950s. Um, but speaking of the kind of stuff you'd see in the 1950s, they designed this intake and exhaust manifold into one casting. Um, and I'm pretty sure the reason they do that is because in colder climates, when fuel is, you know, shot through a carburetor, when it's atomized, it tends to ice up and that could, you know, cause the car to stop running and so you use the heat from the exhaust to keep the intake side warm enough to where the fuel doesn't want to ice over um, super great for cold climates not super awesome for racing and so uh, mr rivers provided me a new intake manifold he wants to use for this project it's a uh, dual carburetor often that needs to fit here. And it just might be that there is not enough room for it to exist with this log style manifold, exhaust manifold. I, I wanna try to reuse this exhaust manifold simply because we're kind of under a time crunch. You know how these projects go, they always show up at your door just before the race. So I want to avoid remaking this. I'm pretty sure the bottleneck and flow is not in this exhaust manifold. It's in the actual, the way the valves are designed into the block. They go, they're, they're facing up on top of the block deck and then they have to flow up and over down into the cylinder and then back up out of the cylinder and back down and then it goes into the exhaust manifold. So. You know, having a, a better flowing exhaust manifold, I really don't think it's going to be a huge performance gain, but it could be. Um, but for now, just want to go ahead and just cut off as much of this intake manifold as possible, get it mocked up on the block, and kind of just see um, how it's looking. If I am going to reuse this, this exhaust manifold, I'm going to have to figure out a how to weld to cast i haven't done a whole lot of that um it's not impossible but it's you can weld it I'm, I'm just not quite sure the reliability after it goes through several heat cycles is it is it going to crack like what what's going to happen i i really don't know and so that's kind of also nudging me in the direction of building a new exhaust manifold so i'm thinking bandsaw yeah Let's start with the bandsaw. Okay. That's a little sketchy, but looks like it'll work. I think 
that's what we were going for. All right, let's get the other side. Okay. Already looking so much lighter. Now I gotta figure out how to cut it this way. So after some serious consideration, I think I got this jigged up in a way where I'm gonna take a good chunk of this metal out in this one cut. Wish me luck. Okay, now where is it touching? Oh, mother. Oh, all right. Give me a minute. Well, it sure would have been nice if that actually worked, but you know, can't always be that lucky, especially in this shop. I'm just gonna have to finish the cut with a, I don't know, right angle grinder uh, without a shield. Yeah, without the shield. That'll work. Uh. <laughs> Bigger hammer. I was able to cut all the way around it, but there's this one part on the inside here that is definitely not cut, and I can't reach it with the right angle grinder. Mm, I'm starting to think oxyacetylene might be the way to go on this, but I want to avoid that. Let me smack on it a few more times, maybe I can get it to just break. Whoosh! So, I wanted to, you know, make this process look a little bit more sophisticated than what I'm doing right now. I, I'm literally beating it to death with a hammer. I'm gonna have to get a bigger bandsaw. I, I think that's that's the what we're starting to learn today. Ah. I mean, that worked exactly how I thought it would work. Nice. Now what? Okay, I think I've decided what we're gonna do. We're going to do a quick test weld where I weld some regular steel to cast iron. I have done zero research on whether or not this is doable or not. I, I just like to kind of test these things out for myself. I've done the least amount of prep work as possible. That way, if the weld actually holds together and it works, I'll, I'll have some confidence that this, this will make it through a race. Um, of course, when I perform the real weld, I'll, I'll do a lot of prep and I'll actually preheat all the metals you know, get them nice and hot so that when I perform the weld, everything can cool down at the same time and there'll be less chance for a crack to, to form. And please do not be taking notes right now because this is just an experiment. I, I really don't know if you can weld steel to cast iron. If it does happen to actually weld, I wanna put it through a real torture test. I wanna, I wanna hit it against the table. I wanna throw it up in the air and let it hit the ground. I, I wanna, heat it all up with the torch and dunk it in some water. Just everything that they just say you shouldn't do. And that'll that'll help me feel like, man, I made a great product today. It's not gonna weld, I bet. 
I'm just going to use standard mild steel welding rod and my TIG. Let's do this. I'm running about 100 amps on the welder to start off with. I have no idea if that's enough or too much. I have my pulse width modulator on for no particular reason other than I just forgot to turn it off. Smoking a little bit, which is telling me that the cast iron has absorbed some oil and goo. Uh, but that is a tack. It is welding together. That is a great sign. This being an older cast uh, material, you know, it might not have as much junk material in it that, that modern cast alloys uh, would have. So that might actually weld. Let me put a real bead on it this time and let me turn my pulse width modulator on. Buffing up the heat, another 15 amps. I'm gonna have to turn a fan on. Not 100% sure what I did with my respirator. I should probably be wearing that right now. If you're welding this crap, wear your respirator. I'm sitting here, letting this cool down. I can hear it making noises. Sounds like a little tiny man in there with a little tiny pick. And he's trapped. He's, he's trying to get out of there. It's not the best welding I've ever done, but I'm, I'm not even trying right now. I want this to be crappy welds. And if it survives everything I'm about to do to it, then when I do my good welds, it's gonna be good. I'm losing my mind. I think I'm breathing too much fumes. Okay. Seems like it's <clears throat> cooled down enough. Ah. First test, it's gonna be like a foot off the table. Ooh. Pass. Two feet. Okay, hanging in there. Pretty cool. Now I'm gonna spike it into the table like a football. Ow! Looking good so far. Let's keep going. I need a face mask. Here. That is pretty impressive. Okay. Calvin, everything's all right, bud. Don't worry about it. Daddy's just, daddy's just working. Isn't it weird that a cat just hears noises like this and wants to come check it out? Psycho. Let's try a side table hit. This is the, I have a dirty engine and I'm gonna drive my car to the car wash and wash it off before anything has a chance to cool down. Test. Check to make sure my acetone bottle was far enough away. I don't believe how many rags I caught on fire. Still haven't caught the bottle yet.
Whoops. Okay. See it? Glowing red hot. Time to hit it with the pressure washer. Interesting. Okay. Let's let it finish cooling. I think I'm gonna drop it some more. And if it survives that, then golly, I'm just gonna weld this <laughs> manifold and let it let it ride. Trust me, I've learned my lesson. After smashing my finger, I'm gonna wear the gloves this time. That just got expensive, Mr. Bow. You know what's funny is the actual weld itself did not break. It's just the cast. See how it took chunks of the casting with it and the weld that is on this pipe tube is actually still holding. Decisions. A rather interesting result I got. I, I really did not think this was going to stay together at all. Uh, I'm, this just must be some good freaking iron in this. And it's weldable apparently. And you don't have to do any type of prep work to, uh, to reach a, a semi-decent result. That means when I go to weld the, the old manifold, you know, weld some parts back on. You're gonna see what's gonna happen. But when I go to weld this, there's a good chance it's gonna stay. I mean, I got this thing glowing red hot, so. So, it was at this point in editing this video when this old Tony dropped a major bombshell on me. He released a new video on welding cast iron. This kind of put me in a tailspin for a while, video production wise, because his video kind of makes me look silly. He goes into way more detail than I will ever be capable of. This old Tony is my YouTube hero, you have to understand. When somebody you look up to slaps you in the face with their awesomeness, it's a little humbling. I put this video on the shelf for a few months. I had some soul searching to do, but if you are still curious how to really weld cast iron, I highly recommend you check out his channel. I put a link down below. This old Tony, he, he cracks me up. It's some of the funniest machining and welding related content on YouTube. If you are digging this, I promise you will have a good time with this old Tony. So let me put a bow on this episode of Watch Me Suck. I finished prepping the manifold. I cut out some pieces. I welded everything together. It worked just fine. The car performed its limits race with no problems. And that's all, folks. So, next episode, I want to try to weld some hot rolled steel with a coat hanger. As, like, a fill rod. I don't know. Silly idea just popped into my mind. I wanted to give it a try. You know, maybe for some doomsday preparation stuff. Just a last resort. You're out of welding rods. It's a post-apocalyptic world, and you got nothing else to weld with. Can it be done? If you want to see that, maybe subscribe, and you'll get a notice. Also, if you're into Corky Bell-related products and or have a Miata, we took over his inventory, and his awesome parts are available on our website, blipspeed.com. Number 36, out. Okay, make sure you have a good time. Watch this old Tony's video. I love you guys. I got to get out of here.